it's it's great to be back at a Kelvy conference. I'm sorry, with my feed, I can't see you, but uh, after we've worked on some audio issues, and sorry, everybody, that we started a little bit late. We were having some significant audio problems. But uh, it, I'm really stoked and excited because I've got so much new material to show everybody about platypods, but this time not so much about camera support, but about lighting, about flash support and other kinds of lights. We've got some amazing pictures to show you, some incredible setups to show you, new ideas. I think everybody's going to learn something uh, at this session. You know what, I think one of the main things that people need to take away from this is how you can use platypods, multiple platypods, plus all the accessories, and you don't need them all, but it just kind of depends on your setup, but how can people use these platypods in order to mount their lighting gear in places they haven't thought of before, in places they couldn't do before, and I'll tell you what the key is, there's no light stand you can be incredibly portable. That's right, and, and nothing beats platypods for portability. Our Ultra, our Max, we'll go into these uh, briefly, and I, I, again, I wanna show you all the equipment and show you all the, all the photos. But you, know, you don't either, don't always have a light stand with you, or you're in a situation where you don't want people to be tripping over light stands. We'll show some examples of that. You're at a party, little kids running around, Platypods are great are a great way to plant your lights in places without light stands being all over the floor. And you can also get into the lowest angles possible. You know, if you want to get a real low angle light to light up a bride from behind, a, a rim light for the dress, or uh, Scott was talking this morning about uh, a low light to be able to light up either the background or as a hair light, uh, I'll show you a way that you can use a platypod to mount that kind of a light very, very easily, again, at a super low angle with equipment that you may already have and some equipment that we may recommend that you, you go out and, and take a look at and, per, and purchase. All right, well, that sounds fantastic. And by the way, Dr. T, just so you have a heads up, we've got a, a good connection here, so we don't need our makeshift connection any longer. All right, so I wanna talk to you a little bit about the fast setup and the platypod itself because some people that aren't familiar with it aren't familiar with like how is it built how how is it designed what is with the um the titanium part and the aluminum part and things like that so can we just sure. show those off real quick sure just briefly so platypods come in two flavors a larger one this is the platypod max now if you have to set up some big lights on a tabletop surface or on the floor this is a great way to go, or for very heavy equipment that you may need to balance, Max is great. This is made out of aircraft grade aluminum. It's a lifetime tool. It will never bend or break or rust. There is a three eighth inch bolt in the center that is built into the plate, cannot be dislodged. It's rated up to 300 pounds of torque. So you're never gonna break this thing. And we also have the Platypod Ultra, which is a smaller plate. And this is great for small flashes, lights, and again, has the same titanium bolt and the, uh, the aircraft grade aluminum build. This one's rated to about 100 pounds of torque. Um, the adaptability of the Platypods is really what makes it special because we've got screw holes, countersunk screw holes that you can screw this into surfaces. We're gonna show you how that uh, application uh, is helpful. We also have these arms through which you can hang these on a strap, strap it onto poles, railings, and again, we will show you uh, how that's done. And they are incredibly stable. I know many of you have your flashes that came with these little plastic uh, cold shoes, and don't throw them away because <laughs> They still have one good function in that they have a nice uh, quarter inch uh, adapter at the bottom. And I'll show you how we can use that. But these lack stability and I will demonstrate that uh, in just a little bit. Um, any other comments, Larry, before we just briefly show what our product sets are? Yeah, I, I think that people are gonna get a lot out of this. I mean, when I first had a, a flash 
a strobe unit like that, I had the little plastic foot and that's what I thought about it. You know, that I want to set it on a, a table or something like that, that's what I would use. But there are so many reasons that the platypod takes it to the next level, not the least of which are the add-ons in the various kits and the other things that you can do with the, um, uh, with the platypods that you can't do with that little adapter. And I was thinking, why don't you just get rid of it? And you're exactly right. You can use it as a cold shoe adapter because of that little quarter 20 socket in the bottom. Some of them don't have that even. And if you don't have the quarter 20 socket in the bottom of your little uh, free plastic stand that came with your strobe, uh, yeah, then, you it, then it's it going to be the curb. worse. <laughs> it, <laughs> got to get rid of that. All right, well, so let's show people a little bit more of the setup of these. Yeah, we'll go th quickly through the sets because of a lot of our audience already knows this stuff. Sure. And I want to move quickly into the uh, into our slideshow because uh, that's I, I'm really excited about that. All right, so Platypod Max comes as a beautiful box set uh, that contains Max, a set of four spikes built in to the plate. And you can see these spikes are so that if you're on rock or concrete, uh, spikes allow you to get grip on rock or concrete so it won't slip around. And they're reversible, so you have rubber feet uh, on the bottom. But for our purposes today, for most flash uh, applications, you're going to be able to just take Max or Ultra and you're going to be able to just put it down onto a surface. Uh, let me move to a, a wider camera here. And... It also comes with a little velour a bag in here and a small cross nut adapter. Now, if you don't want the box on here because you have a large piece of equipment you got to put on here and maneuver around, the box pops right off. Everything here is washable, by the way, uh, and, and rust proof. Uh, so that's Max. Then comes the Ultra Set. This is our retail box set. Now, Ultra comes in two offerings. Uh, you can get the Ultra itself, plus it comes with a set of the same four spikes as you get with Max, but this time in a little wallet holder. And it has a small 20 inch strap, which is good to get around four or five inch railings and a little carabiner that holds everything together. And you can just hang this off your bag. I think, Larry, you, I think the carabiner is your favorite part, correct? You know, it, it really is because I carry everything on the carabiner on my belt loop. And it's so easy and, and it's fast access and things like that. And I, as, I, as I've told you before, I have a small ball head on my platypod and I leave that actually attached to my camera. When I go on a photo walk, I'm walking around with my camera already on the platypod. So I'm ready to go with, uh, um, with the platypod. I, it, it's, like, <laughs> it's like carrying around your camera on a tripod, but it's nice little compact Hold, hold it in my hand without any issues. But for lighting, it's a little bit different. So for lighting, um, I, I use a lot of those same kinds of things. The strap, and I'll strap it onto um, uh, playground equipment or small tree branches, benches, things like that. Well, and I mentioned there's two offerings for Ultra. We just came out with this about a month ago, uh, and we're calling it the Ultra Commercial Twin Pack. Uh, let me move over to close-up camera here. And what's cool about the Twin Pack now is that it comes with two Platypod Ultras, two spigot adapters, and we're going to talk a lot about these spigot adapters because for lighting, these are essential. They also have two little cross nuts. Oh, let's get one over there and over here to be able to adapt a quarter inch 20 uh, devices onto the plate and also two grippy rubber pads. So if you want to just lay these on, uh, a table, uh, it'll grip really nicely and it won't scratch the table. After uh, Ultra, our next set is the multi accessory kit. Now, the multi kit contains in it a, uh, a spigot adapter again. It also has a little reducer, and we'll show you later how to use that so that you can uh, put that little cold shoe that we were talking about on there or a different type of cold shoe if you have one. It contains a strap. This strap is um, rated to 50 pounds and it's 36 inches long. So this will get you around most tree trunks and uh, a little velour bag that helps hold everything together. And we'll show you uh, more on the uh, multi-accessory kit. And last but not least, there's our platypod goosenecks. 
And these goosenecks are great if you want to hang uh, LED lights from the ceiling or other small devices. Uh, the goosenecks, here, let's get some out over here. Um, the goosenecks look like this. And what's special about our goosenecks is they come as a set of two and they are stackable. So you can just take these and place them right onto, let's move to a wider view here. Sorry, there we go. And you can just mount this right onto a platypod plate. We also sell these Lytra uh, torch lights, which are really cool and very bright. And these come either individually or we have them as part of a uh, set called the Max Macro Bundle. Maybe we'll, we'll show you that a little bit later. Um, all right, Larry, uh, any other comments before we go to the slideshow? Well, I, I, obviously all that gear is familiar to us because we know the kits, but I want people to know, all you have to do is go over to platypod.com and there are sets of gear and, and there are different ways that these sets are combined and put together, not to mention the Black Friday deals, but I mean just all the time. You might get a platypod and get a platypod ultra and the platypod ultra comes with uh, the spiked and rubber feet and the smaller carabiner or the carabiner and the smaller strap and then you might get the ultra because you are rather the multi kit and so there's just all these kits and uh, the twin pack where you get a little bit different setup so it can be a little confusing if you just aren't really into this stuff just swing by platypod.com and you'll see all the sets grouped together and you'll see all the black friday specials group together so you can pick exactly what you want. And I want to shut up so that you can demo this stuff so that people can figure out, oh, I want one of those and not that, but I want that other thing and I want that thing. Yeah, so go ahead and take it away, Plus, Dr. T. Larry, we've made it a lot easier because now with some of these Black Friday specials, if you're undecided, you can get some of this stuff for free. And well, Larry's gonna explain that a little later in a commercial. And also there's plenty of videos on, on our uh, website and. Uh, Larry, as our spokesman, uh, you know, will explain to you uh, the different sets. So let's move right into some beautiful images. And we like to call our system the Platypod ecosystem. And, let's, and these are all the different products that we make and we, or, or we sell, uh, which in, includes also the uh, torch lights plus we have some little Benro ball heads if you need that for your camera support, plus uh, some phone holders. Uh, and next year we are coming uh, out with the Platyball, uh, which is gonna be the world's most revolutionary ball head. I wish we could talk a little bit about the Platyball today, but it's gonna be a little outside the scope. We have so much uh, ground to cover. Now, after this slideshow, please, there's gonna be a brief commercial and hang around because uh, we've got a lot of equipment to show you. I'm going to show you how to set up everything uh, very, very clearly. And if you didn't understand the system before, you will hopefully understand it very well soon. So we've engaged a few um, professional photographers to prepare some slides for this uh, presentation. Uh, Bob and Dawn Davis are uh, not only wedding photographers out of the Chicago uh, area, but they are also Canon explorers of light and uh, major educators in the wedding photography field. You'll find them at WPPI. You'll find a lot of teaching videos uh, they've done. And also they're, they're two incredibly nice people. Larry, you've met them as well. Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah, I follow them on, on Facebook, but uh, having dinner with them was a blast. Well, doing wedding, wedding photography in a pandemic is thing. Business is down for a lot of people, but uh, Bob and Dawn just a few weeks ago were at a socially distanced wedding in Chicago, and they shot some images for us to show how the platypods can be used in wedding situations. And here's several images that they took in the, in the bridal uh, preparatory room. And the beauty of this was they did this with no light stands to trip over. They took 
a platypod. Now here Bob did this with a little ball head. We'll show you how to do the same kind of setup just with a spigot adapter and a, uh, either a flash bracket adapter or a cold shoe and to support your light. And all you have to do is take this, put it on a tabletop surface, or if you can find uh, a bookshelf and just bounce it off the walls or the ceiling. Here, uh, Bob has a MagMod unit and we're gonna show you in a few minutes why if you're gonna use a modifier like a MagMod, you really need some more stability that's present in the platypod that really doesn't come with your little plastic uh, cold shoe. So here's you know one of the setups and look at just the natural light. I mean, in a situation like this, you're capturing the moments. You're not really trying to make this look overly lit. Uh, I know Joe and Scott have been showing you know, techniques of using light and shadow and all this, but that's not for this situation. Here you just want natural lighting. And what's great about using flash here is that you can balance out and overcome the indoor tungsten light, you know, type lighting uh, to give you really good uh, images and color balance. And look, this was just taken with uh, a flash on each side of the room, bouncing straight up and nice even lighting. What do you say, Larry? Well, you, you have to know exactly what you're doing and you have to be able to put the flashes exactly where they need to be to, the, to get that kind of balanced light. If you look at that image, instead of looking at me, if you look at that image, you'll see that the lighting is just smooth across every single person's face. You don't see shadows. Nobody's got a hidden shadow, you know, a shadow blocking their face. There's nothing like that. Everything is smooth and balanced, and you can only do that if you can get the lights in the right place. And you can only do that if you have the right equipment. And so a lot of times we would think, well, light stands and things like that, but that just doesn't always work. They, they get in the way uh, and, and the light stands just cause problems. Larry, can you just ask control room to check on audio for a second? Because I just got a message from one of our friends that they've lost audio. Uh, maybe they just need to refresh their screen. Is anybody experiencing issues with the audio? Okay. So, do you guys have any audio issues? I'm hearing Dr. T just fine. Yep, and so we have it okay here. Okay, so whoever couldn't hear, just please uh, refresh your screen. There we go. We're gonna go and, and look at the next uh, image. Is that okay? Yeah, let's roll. All right, detail shots. At a wedding, the detail shots are super important. And if you can have in mind the exact setup you're gonna use before you go in, you can get in and out of here really, really quickly and get some beautiful images. Now, the beauty of using, we, we could light this up with a, uh, with a macro uh, set, uh, such as our LED set, but when you've got two strong flashes like this, you instantly can stop down to F16, F22, or less if you have a macro lens, and get tremendous depth of field and here we go. That's what Bob got. That's fantastic. Now, I want to tell everybody, it, Dr. T, I don't know if you can in your slideshow, if you could go back one slide in your slideshow. I want everybody to look at this. This is, you're stuck. You're in a hotel environment. You can see in the mirror reflected above, you've got uh, can lights that have kind of that warm tungsten look to them. And you can even see on the edge of the table where, where the uh, shoes and the hanger and jewelry are, you can see on the leading edge of the table, there's a reflection of those overhead lights, which are kind of warm. So there is an orange tint in the lighting in this picture. But when a professional is using strobes, uh, like Bob did, then when you go to the next, now picture this, just keep this in your brain because there's a yellow warmth to this image but then let's look at the final image in the next slide. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's smooth lighting and it's white lighting. So th the color balance is there. It's exactly what you want it to be. You don't have the, uh, the warm lights that are in the environment influencing this 
in a way that you don't want them to. They're, they're not there. They're not causing an orange cast or a warm cast to the image. You've got a professional with strobes using them the right way to overpower the ambient light. All right, next image is just showing how uh, Bob also can use uh, these MagMod scoops uh, to light up different areas. Plus, uh, you can see in the middle, he likes to do uh, some remote photography because often he's the, uh, he's the only shooter. And uh, if he's at one end of the room and wants to capture images from the other end of the room, sets up a remote with a pocket wizard and the appropriate connecting cord, has the pocket wizard transmitter in his pocket, and look what he can do. Well, first, before, before we go to that, sorry, one more, one more application we talked about before is rim lighting the bride's dress. This was a technique uh, originally advanced by the late and great Monty Zucker, who was a wedding photographer, master teacher par excellence. Uh, David Zeiser has also uh, pushed this technique quite through his career. Dr. T, and you can see with no light stand legs showing behind the bride, you just take your flash put it on the floor behind the bride and get this beautiful rim lighting. What I love about this is not only does it light up the veil incredibly well, but it's also got this edge light on the bride's face. It's like she's glowing as she's kissing her brand new husband. It's a fantastic image. And, it, and it's something as simple as getting that flash. And by the way, getting that flash there quickly. You've got a lot going on when you're shooting a wedding and you want to get it there quickly and safely and not worry about it tipping over because it's on one of those little cheap plastic stands. You've got it reliably exactly where you want it. Uh, next image. So you see Bob under the wedding canopy and uh, he's using a, a, a long lens to shoot uh, images of the bride and her party coming down the aisle. But then he wants to grab that classic aisle shot at the other end of the room and can't really be running back and forth. So he sticks his hand in his pocket and he activates his pocket wizard. And that's the shot. Wow. That's incredible. And that's once you once you practice this technique, it is it it, it can save really save the day for a, a wedding photographer. I've seen Bob put cameras in a lot of places in wedding setups that a human can't be. You can't be well, here's, there. Here's during. a nice example of that, Larry. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's no photographer that is pressing the shutter button where this camera is. This camera is up there, it's planned in advance, the camera is positioned in advance, and then he's able to press a simple little remote remotely and get this fantastic image. And all you do is you strap your uh, platypod rig uh, onto one of the poles of the uh, marriage canopy and uh, very subtly it's sitting there all ready to roll. Now you understand why we now make a platypod ultra commercial twin pack because uh, people need multiples of these and we can save them a lot of money uh, by doing this. And also you can plant lights uh, in these situations without having to have yet one more lighting person standing under uh, the canopy and distracting from the beauty of the uh, ceremony. There's, there's so much going on here. I, I hope people are picking up on this. All right, our friend Co Tony Corbell. Oh, Tony's been in the business for a while as a master educator, a master of lighting. Uh, he, has, he was involved way back in the early days of uh, Nick Software with development. In fact, I think uh, Tony wrote a book together with Josh, Josh Haftel on Nick Software. And uh, we've asked Tony to demonstrate a few examples of cross lighting using platypods so that when you go uh, out on the road, you don't have to drag light stands with you. You'll save a lot of space and weight in, with your equipment by just taking your platypods with you and a few straps. So, uh, ready to roll, Larry? Yeah, please. I, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I was watching Scott's class earlier today when he had the model in and he was doing a class on gels. And he had some cross-lighting set up where he was obviously showing what he was doing with the gels and Tony is just a master photographer. So, I'm looking forward to these cross-lighting setups 
and the final images from this. So Tony's wife, Mandy, was kind enough to uh, model for this photo. And what, if you can see with my uh, cursor, we've got one platypod mounted onto a column here with a strap. And uh, I think he's got a ball head on there and uh, a little cold, uh, not cold shoe, it's actually a, a camera bracket holding his light over there. Again, you know, you can jerry rig your own equipment to this or you can use some of ours. Uh, there's so many ways to accomplish this. And then at the other end, in this distant um, uh, column, which is shown in the right-hand picture, you've got another platypod that's strapped onto that column. This one has one of our small disc risers and a cold shoe uh, adapter on it, together with Tony's Pro Photo uh, flash. And just to show you what a difference this cross lighting makes. It's amazing. I, I you, can't, so you have, it just looks so natural. There, there is nothing that suggests there's a flash going on. And in fact, there are two to light her proportionately. So you have key light coming from camera left, giving the main light nice, clean, color balanced light. And then a little bit of fill coming in from camera right, giving you some uh, hair highlights over here and outlining uh, her left arm uh, on the right side of the uh, picture here. And like you said, Larry, it's just natural. You get a nice nasal shadow over here, an almost Rembrandt-like uh, effect. We would call this open loop and, uh, and good, clean image. That's what Tony does. Tony, Tony just makes great images. Another example of cross lighting uh, in this rustic room, uh, Tony's taking some uh, photos of some uh, guitars. And you can see in the right hand image, a platypod strapped on to a pole. Now here we've got one of our spigot adapters. Again, we're gonna show you how to do this. And, um, and um, what we call an umbrella adapter. I suppose you've been introduced to these uh, already, which mounts a flash together. If you want, you can put an umbrella on there too. We'll show you how to use those and pro photo light. And on the left side, Tony did something a little unusual that I don't do too often. And that is, uh, he just took a, a plain $3 uh, pony clamp or an A clamp and uh, clamped the platypod onto a bifold uh, screen that's standing up over here. And look at the gorgeous light you get out of here. Oh, first of all, I'm sorry. He did have one light stand, and that one light stand was there to support his screen, but uh, didn't, have, didn't have any other light stands available at the time. So here is final image, and just beautiful, natural-looking lighting, but it's all flash. Yeah, it's fantastic. And one of the things that people don't realize is that you can very quickly, very easily put your flashes in incredibly unconventional places without light stands. Strapped it to a pole or clamped it with an A-clamp to that, uh, that piece of um, uh, door frame or, or door wood. That, that is such a nice way to work. All right, and one more example of cross lighting here. Uh, Tony's got one flash sitting on a tabletop here, another flash on this little table stand over here, mounted on spigot adapters with umbrella uh, type uh, flash brackets. And here's the other view. You can see on the left-hand side here uh, what that umbrella uh, adapter uh, looks like. And we have, I have a more compact one to show everybody. Uh, which I highly, if you don't already own these, I mean, these are extremely useful pieces of equipment. But the final image. Wow. That's beautiful. And, and, and you know, I was wondering why he used a strap to strap the platypod down to a table. Well, in that shot, you could see it wasn't a table. It was like a music stand. It was something I think it was, yeah. A, a little, yeah, little and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trust an expensive flash sitting on a music stand like that, but then he strapped it there, so that made perfect sense. All right, here's my own setup, guys, and this is something I don't think anybody uh, has really seen before, unless you've been following our blog on, uh, on the Platypod website. But my ingredients are the 
Manfrotto magic arm. And I got to tell you, I think this is a highly useful and versatile piece of equipment, but you'll see that Platypod makes it a whole lot more versatile. Uh, a safety cable, because if you're going to hang equipment from the ceiling, I high re highly recommend you use a safety cable. This is a cable loop that, for our purposes, can actually screw right into uh, one of the holes in the Platypod Ultra uh, to anchor the safety cable uh, and some screws. And what we do is we take a Platypod Ultra, screw it into a, uh, a beam going across. This is the, in, in my basement. And the point of this is we want to show how you can do clamshell lighting without having a light stand in the way because clamshell lighting requires you to have a light directly above your subject and a reflector directly below your subject. And if you have that light on a light stand, uh, how you're going to have a light stand in the middle of your uh, in the middle of your image unless you've got a boom and not everybody's got one. And this is a nice setup. I just leave this on the ceiling and I can rig all kind of lights and equipment and stuff uh, onto this. So we then attach the Manfrotto magic arm using the female 3 8 inch socket on one side of it right into our 3 8 inch titanium bolt. And I put a uh, little uh, hook over here to be able to attach the cable. I then mount on my old trusty Speedatron strobe unit. You can't find these anymore. Speedatron uh, yeah. out of business. But this is an amazingly powerful uh, and clean, beautiful quality light. And what's really great about it is you can hook on quite a bit of different modifiers uh, onto this. Now, you could probably do this setup also using a uh, an octabox uh, with a regular flash. I did it with a strobe, and I just wanted to show you how much strength this has. I mounted a beauty dish onto my strobe with a diffusion sock over the beauty dish. This is above the subject. I took a, um, what they call a catch light reflector or an eye lighter reflector. Yeah, Some yeah. companies make these. And these are amazing at giving you beautiful, clean catch lights that are so subtle, it basically just looks like you're adding light and color to the iris uh, of the eyes. Uh, I white balanced it using an Expo disc. Okay. I measured the uh, exposure using a flash meter. You could equivalently just do by trial and error uh, you know, regulating the power of your light. But I, for me, I like using a flash meter because basically I'll nail the exposure on the first shot. And then the final image that comes out of this. Now, this is my wife, Minna. And please realize these photos were 100% unretouched. This is, was imported out of camera into Lightroom exported as JPEGs, and this is what we got. Uh, with no exposure adjustments, no color balance adjustments, and uh, absolutely no retouching. And w what's beautiful about clamshell lighting, or what they call butterfly lighting, because it leaves you a little bit of a butterfly-shaped shadow uh, under the nose, is that it just fills in character lines and gives an extremely natural look. And you can see the color of her eyes. This is not bad for my wife of 40 years and grandmother of over 20 grandchildren. I think the, the image itself is fantastic. And one of the things that you're getting is uh, an even better version of ring light. So many people are believing that ring light is the solution, the end all be all. And I actually know a lot of people that don't like a ring light reflection in the eye. And the clamshell lighting and that eye lighter, that beautiful curved eye lighter, they have the effect of filling in, like you were talking about, all the facial details and making a smooth, beautiful facial uh, image capture. But the eyes, 
just look at the eyes, how you have that nice highlight at the top of the pupil, and then right. on the bottom of the iris, uh, you have that curved highlight, that specular highlight that's just real faint, and it's beautiful. Thank you. All right, next, our friend Shiv Verma. Uh, Larry, you know Shiv well. I Shiv do. Is a photography instructor, master photographer in the New England area. He does a lot of uh, workshops, a lot of teaching, uh, especially uh, online. And uh, Shiv is demonstrating for us how you can use uh, platypods for macro lighting. And hey, we're going into a cold winter and a, still a pandemic and a lot of people are taking out small objects and doing macro photography. So this is our Max Macro Bundle that includes Max, some goosenecks, some uh, LED lights, and you can see these tiny little watch parts over here. And uh, look how, how cool that, that looks. Uh, we have another image from Shiv that we, we did at WPPI uh, just this past February. It seems so long ago. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that, oops, sorry, come back. Uh, you can see here uh, how Shiv's got his camera set up on a tabletop on a platypod uh, max. Plus, he's got one light here on a platypod ultra on a gooseneck. And we have these cabled in because we were keeping this uh, setup going for eight hours straight. So uh, the little lights, you know, last a, a good amount of time, but eight hours would, would be pushing it. And he's got a background held up also by some platypods with goose with goosenecks, so Shiv really went to town on this one. And this little red thing here is a gelled LED light uh, bouncing off the side of the subject. And look at this ring shot. That's incredible. That came out of that image. Yeah, those, those lights or lights are amazing. They're not flash, but I think, I think they'll let you uh, slide on this one, Dr. T, to let you show a light that isn't a flash at the flash <laughs> conference. <laughs> it's still lighting. It's it's a, still yeah, it's lighting. beautiful. And now for our, for our final image, and this is something that I think is nothing short of amazing, and I think a lot of you are gonna wanna uh, get this piece of, of equipment because it's cheap and easy, and you're gonna get amazing uh, image. Hilmar Smith, She's also a member of the Platypod team. Uh, she uh, runs our social networking, Instagram. Plus, uh, Hilmar is a uh, Kelby One instructor, has done several classes already uh, for Kelby One. She writes in Photoshop User Magazine and is a master portrait uh, photographer and uh, teacher. And we asked Hilmar to show how you can jerry-rig your own little softbox, just using a folding umbrella. Now, I went online looking today for, for this compact folding umbrella. This folds down to about 12 inches. I'm gonna show it to you. Uh, it was made by Westcott. I could not seem to find it today on uh, B&H. So uh, you could do the same thing with any 32-inch uh, umbrella uh, and store it in your kit. I will show you how to put together this entire rig in a few minutes. Um, after the commercial, but uh, Hilmar set up her daughter Nora, who's a little ham. <laughs> oh yeah, she's great, an actress, <clears throat> and uh, just put these this V flat behind her to give a uh, dark background. And you're not going to believe the light that you get out of this setup. Take a look at the next image. What do you wow. say, Larry? Wow. That's, you know, I'm, I'm such a fan of Hillmars already, and a lot of us uh, Kelby folks are, but you see the original and then you, the environment, and then you see this finished image. She is brilliantly, masterfully using a flash, and she's using that single flash, and that big umbrella close to her daughter like that gives you that nice, smooth uh, application of light. On the left side of the image, you get good detail in the hair, and then you get a beautiful fall off with that V flat you were talking about. You get that dark side, and, and actually it's the negative of being a reflector. It actually absorbs 
light, including the flash. So you don't get light bouncing back onto the right side of the image. It's a very specific, um, uh, intentional use of light and uh, use of darkness. And all out of a simple setup like that. Now, That's this, this I think is worth its weight because you can just take this and put it in your backpack or in your in your camera bag, uh, taking up very little space. Especially when you go to visit friends and you want to do individual portraits, you take this and set it up on a table. But we're gonna we're gonna get into that. We're gonna show you how to how to do that. So to summarize, Max is for uh, bigger <coughs> units and uh, for uh, for tabletop use. It's excellent. Ultra is great here for lighting when you want to strap lights onto things because it's super fast and easy to, to do. Uh, we'll, we'll show you a little bit later more on that. And uh, aside from our, um, uh, our Black Friday specials, we also have a special offer for all our uh, Kelby One friends. And I would suggest everybody either do a screen capture here or take your phone and take an image of your screen because using the promo code Kelby Media 20 uh, not only will you find tremendous savings on the Black Friday specials, but you will also sh get free shipping in the United States on all orders over $50. So uh, let's, um, I'm going to come out of here and uh, we're going to take a break for two minutes. And uh, Mike, Christina, if you want to go ahead and roll a commercial and uh, let us know when we're back. Thank you. Hey photographers, it's Black Friday time again and Platypod has all kinds of crazy popular gear with shooters at every level. So whether you want a Platypod Ultra or a Platypod Max, we've got you covered. Just wait till you hear about the four deals they have this year. If you want a Platypod Max, go right ahead and get one. And you'll get the super popular multi-accessory kit for free. That's $29 worth of accessories free. So many people want two platypods, there's even a brand new Ultra Commercial Twin Pack. And sure, the $89 price is a fantastic deal for two Ultras. But while Black Friday supplies last, you buy a Twin Pack and you get a pair of these awesome versatile goosenecks free. The third Black Friday special is all about the gear packed Ultra Essentials Kit. Now, the Ultra Essentials Kit comes with the Platypod Ultra and all the normal Ultra gear like spiked and rubber feet, the 20 inch cinch strap, and the carabiner. Plus, you also get the spigot adapter, the quarter 20 riser, the 36 inch cinch strap, the grippy rubber pad, the drawstring pouch, the square jellyfish phone holder, and the ARCA compatible Benro IN00 ball head. All that makes up the Ultra Essentials Kit, and the $130 price tag means you save $30. How could you even top that for Black Friday? Well, how about $30 worth of free goosenecks? And the fourth doorbuster deal. Now, macro shooters love all the amazing gear that's part of the Max Macro Bundle. Two super bright Lytra lights and diffusers, two pairs of awesome goosenecks, and the full-size Platypod Max. And they love it because of the $60 bundle savings. But now, we're going to give you not only a free multi-accessory kit, but also a Platypod Ultra. That's crazy! You're saving $148. These Black Friday deals are already going on right now, and they're going on only as long as supplies last. They sold out again last year, so don't wait. Follow the link below and get your Platypod Black Friday deals today. And we are back. That was one of my favorite commercials ever. <laughs> you know what? I, like I, I, I love this stuff so much, and, and I want to talk about it, but Dr. T, I want to turn it back over to you. We, we're on a little bit of a time crunch, so I want to make sure that you get a chance to talk about each of the pieces. And when we were doing prep for this, you've got mounting setups, solutions, and I guarantee you, even if you're a Platypod owner and a fanboy or girl, and you really have all this stuff down and you think you know it all, you're going to learn some stuff from Dr. T. So take it away. Okay, let's, let's dive right in because a lot of ground to cover. And again, I'm sorry we, we had some audio problems at the beginning and that set us back a little bit here. So first piece of equipment to show, let me, uh, let me get into the close-up camera, is the uh, spigot adapter. 
this has a 3 8 inch socket on one side, quarter inch 20 on the other side, but it allows you to adapt so many pieces of equipment to your Platypod that I think this is very important. It comes uh, in our Platypod uh, multi-accessory kit, and you get two of them in the Ultra Twin Pack. They are, sorry, they are not sold uh, individually. Okay, well, first of all, just to impress everybody, let me go to a, to a wider view, and we're gonna reach down here under the table just to give you an idea of what this that's a beast on. that's amazing it's a beast this is my this is my trusty old speedatron strobe this is a heavy unit uh this one is 500 watt seconds we also have one that's a uh, thousand watt seconds but if you want a floor light and or you want a background light you put this on here and we're going to show you a little later on uh, not not too much later on, uh, how you can raise things up using a Manfrotto magic arm uh, on this rig. But let's let's put this back down. That really was just to impress what? everybody about our strength. So when you're using a spigot adapter, let's go back in back in close. Okay. You mount this on to our to our main bolt. And then you put on an umbrella adapter. This is one way to attach the lights. There's, there's another way that I'll show you in a few minutes. Yeah, that, that spigot and adapter is just like so many light stands. It's just like the top of a light stand, so it's ready to go for camera gear. Correct, and you can, you can just take your strobe. This has a cold shoe at the top. Now, this spigot adapter is made by Impact. I highly recommend it. It's available at B&H for about 25 bucks. I just checked that out. And what's nice about doing this on our spigot adapter versus there's a little brass adapter that comes with it is that with a umbrella adapter like this, if it's sitting on a surface, you can't really turn the bottom knob well because it knocks into the table. By having our three inch spigot adapter, it raises it up. Now, let's go back to a more wide view and you can then take this unit, add on a modifier like a mag mod, like that, and you can use this so many different ways. You could use it as a background light, you could put it on a table, you can put it up on a bookshelf, and you've got a nice, good, stable hold over here. Now, what's wrong with just using this? Well, I'll show you very, very simply. <laughs> we take a flash and we'll stick the flash onto here and just aim that straight forward let's bring that around a little bit here you go okay now add on a modifier and there's your problem yeah it's not okay. stable it's not stable not at stable all not stable at all okay whereas if you honestly just take the other item that's in our in our multi accessory kit, which is a reducer down to one quarter inch, and put that on here. Now, add that on to that little tripod adapter at the bottom there. Yeah. And that's why I said don't throw these out yet because they still have another nice purpose and. Point this towards the toe there. And look, now you have a nice stable adapter that will not easily knock over. So that's why we're we're much better than 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 that. Now there is a different type of cold shoe adapter that I recommend, and these run about five bucks or so. You can see that over here, and it has a quarter twenty at the bottom. You could take this as well and put this right on to our little riser that comes with the multi-accessory kit. Put that on there and then mount your flash on that. Now we showed you before uh, Hilmar Smith's setup with the umbrella. I'd like to demonstrate that uh, for everybody. 
While you're getting that ready, Dr. T, I'll mention I have a Platypod Max. And on the Max, I have the spigot adapter. And then I have a really nice studio light in my video studio. And that's my backlight behind me. I love it because it's stable. I don't have to worry about it. I can direct the light where I want it to go. And it's, it's not something that's on like, I started out trying out one of those little mini uh, light stands and it just kept teetering over because you have to have a, a flat surface. And the Platypod Max just does exactly what I need it to. It keeps that light in uh, the right place on my background in my video studio. Absolutely. All right, so here's the umbrella setup. This is a, a Westcott 12-inch uh, to 32-inch folding umbrella. Again, I hope they get these on sale again, but otherwise any 32-inch umbrella would work fine with this. Okay, I'm gonna open this this way. And then you just extend this and put this into the umbrella socket in your umbrella adapter and then just lean this on the edge of the table. And I suggest if you're at a friend's table, use a tablecloth so that you don't scratch anything. And then you add on your flash into here and then face the flash directly into the umbrella and you're good to shoot and you basically have a portable soft box. And what's so fantastic is how small this packs up. Correct. It's such a huge, it, it's, a, it's a big, comprehensive, complete lighting solution on site, but it packs up and travels so small. It's a great way to work. Correct, correct. All right, um, we're gonna show you also, I mentioned the uh, magic arm and how to use how to use that so uh, for the magic arm you don't need the you don't need the spigot adapter because it has its own spigot now magic arms are great uh, and if you guys can afford to get one of these variable friction magic arm is amazing what's magic about it is that with one knob you loosen all the joints uh, in in the arm just with one with one turn so this has a a quarter 20 uh, on one end it has a three-eighth inch, I'm sorry, quarter 20 and one-eighth, three-eighth inch on the other end. And I just take that and mount it into the titanium bolt. Now this thing we had on a ceiling, but I wanna show you how to use this for tabletop or floor use, because as Scott mentioned this morning, uh, it's very hard to get lights down low to the floor for background lights. Uh, he mentioned using a special light stand for this. I'm gonna show you how you can do this without the special light stand. And essentially you wanna balance the light, balance the magic arm so that the tip is kind of center of gravity over the platypod. And then you just take your, your flash bracket, your umbrella adapter and put that on here. And then you can just take a flash and mount that up here, and now you can use this as a hair light, a rim light, a background light, so many different uses and applications uh, available there. And you have incredible uh, degree of freedom of movement uh, using this. This is the only way that I know of to mount a magic arm onto a tabletop without having to use a special clamp. And this is just, I think, a much better way to work and certainly on a floor a clamp's not going to help you at all yeah it is you know Any dr t uh, at this point they were supposed to be starting the luminar ai and it will be starting immediately after we wrap up i know we're going to run a little bit longer but i also do want to um, move us along because i'm being told by the control room that we're wrapping up fairly soon so i want to make sure that we don't miss out on uh, the pieces and parts that you were gonna demo this evening, and then also talk just briefly about the, um, uh, the Black Friday specials. Okay, uh, do we have time, Larry, to show the, uh, the uh, tri-grip, uh, the um, last light setup? I think we have about 
three or four minutes left at this point. Oh no! Okay, yeah. well, you'll have to lose. You'll have to look online. Let me show this because I think this is just so amazing. If you want to, if you don't have an assistant and you want to hold a reflector on, I'm gonna do this as fast as I can, and you just take a super clamp, and not to be confused with the rock group Super Tramp, <laughs> and here we go. We'll just open that up a little bit. And I know Joe loves using these Lastolite units because you can hold them with one hand. I'm going to do this under the table. We'll expand that so it doesn't knock over anything. There you go. And wow. There you go. And you can just place this here, strap it on to anything that you like. And look at that, you've got a diffusion source that you can blast a light right through. And we'll, whoop, we'll put that <laughs> right down here. Okay, uh, I promised I was going to show the pieces in the, in the uh, multi-accessory kit. So those include grippy rubber pad, one spigot adapter, which we talked about. Also the reducer unit so that you can put on a cold shoe and also the straps. And one key thing about the straps is to know that when you're setting it up, always black Velcro on the outside, strap it onto the object that you like. If you're using Ultra, you'll be able to then just hook Ultra onto your strap and maybe apply a little counter pressure if you're on a tree, uh, a little counter pressure using one of our spikes. And if you're using Max, uh, you just have to you have to thread the strap through the belt slots, slots in Max before you do that. Larry, I think we're just about out of time. Is there time for a question or two? I, I received a couple of questions, so I want to really quickly go through um, NJ Mike said, I must have missed it, but how do you connect the flash to the platypod? But I think you just did that since I received the question. Um, let's go ahead and, oh, <laughs> here's a question for me. Do you carry the Ultra or the Max on your belt loop on the uh, uh, carabiner? I carry the Ultra generally. Uh, but the there are carabiner holes on the Max as yeah. well. So if you want to carry a Max on your belt, you can do that as well with a carabiner. Yep. And then a quick question about the goosenecks. Um, there appeared to be a screw on the side. You were showing, Dr. T, you were showing the uh, goosenecks, but there was a screw on the side. What's that for? Okay, so that, that's if you want to, because uh, each, each gooseneck goes male to female. If you want to go male to male, then, uh, here, let me take one of those. If you want to go male to male, you can just take this little uh, cross nut here and mount it right on the end, and now you have a male-to-male -male adapter. Uh, I didn't like the goosenecks that were on the market because you had no choice. They were all male-to-male, -male and you couldn't stack them. The reason we made them male-to-female was you could stack, and this little screw hole on the side is simply for storage. So you yeah, don't so, it's a, so it's a holder. Little cross nut. It's a holder. <laughs> That's great. Dr. Okay. T, real quick, once again, the, uh, the discount code for $50 or shipping, free shipping in the United States for any purchase of $50 or more. Thank you for bringing that back up on screen. That helps a lot. People should be screenshotting the heck out of this. And then also, all the Black Friday specials, where can they find those, Dr. T? So they're all on, just go to platypod.com. You'll see uh, a uh, banner that tells you to, uh, to just go to the Black Friday page, or you can go to our Shop All Products page. Uh, our best special is the Max Macro Bundle, which now comes, Larry, with a free multi and a free ultra. We've never done that before. It's an and amazing And this deal. way, you don't have to sit there and decide, oh, should I get a multi, should I get an ultra? Here you get it all. So I think that's a great deal, and you really save $148. This is an un- believable deal and it may not come back after this holiday season but we really want to want to get a platypod into everybody's hands and i think this conference shows you need more than one there's also other uh specials our ultra essentials kit this is great for travel you can mount a smartphone on it comes with a 
Great little Benro ball head. You save 60 bucks with this, uh, as well as our uh, Platypod uh, uh, commercial twin pack, with which you get two spigot adapters and some goosenecks. This is also great for uh, video conferencing. You want to set up multiple cameras, just like you could see I did today for this uh, presentation. And last but not least, you just want to get a Max, well, we'll give you a free multi-accessory kit with the Black Friday specials. So, Larry, this has been a wonderful time with you. It always is. And I hope to see everybody back at the next Kelby One conference. Dr. T, thank you so much for taking us through those fantastic setups. I know that there are a bunch of gear nerds like me that are watching today, watching what Scott's doing and watching what uh, Joe McNally is doing and going, you know, what's the best setup for me? How can I? And, and whole new worlds have been opened to a lot of people for how to mount and uh, take care of their gear using different platypod setups. So thank you for walking us through so many different versatile options. Oh, and Larry, uh, if anybody wants to hear a little bit about the Platyball, go to the website, click on the Platyball page, and you'll learn all about it. This is going to be out next year, and this is going to take the tripod head world by storm. Uh, we'll, maybe we'll talk about that more at another conference. Thank you. You are such a fun inventor to talk to. The world famous Dr. Larry T. Thank you so much for spending the evening with us. Up almost immediately is going to be Vanelli talking about Luminar AI. So don't go anywhere. Thanks, Dr. T. We'll see you guys later and stick around for Vanelli. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Christine and Mike and everybody in the control room. Really appreciate everybody being there.